Should I use flaps in a turn? That's a fair question. This might be one of the most controversial topics in aviation, but today I'm going to give you some things to think about that you may have never considered before when it comes to using flaps in a turn. Ever since I started this YouTube channel, I've received quite a few negative comments because I use flaps during my turns while I'm in the pattern. When I first read the comments, I was a little bit worried because I never even considered the problems that could come from using flaps while turning. Now you might not know this, but I try to read every comment on my videos. I think there's going to come a point where it's just going to be impossible to do that anymore because I'm getting more and more comments every day. But I really enjoy interacting with everyone on here and what I've found is that I've learned a lot by doing that. And when I see a negative comment like, you should not use flaps on a turn, that sends me into research mode. Especially since I'm a C-130J pilot and we intentionally use flaps in a turn. And so comments like this conflict with a lot of the things that I've been taught. But I've been taught wrong before. To make the problem worse, when some people comment, they include equations in their comment to further solidify their argument. Oh shoot, he used an equation. I should definitely not be using flaps in a turn anymore. <laughs> Bro, I don't care about your equations. I don't know how many people I've seen throw random equations into my comments that have nothing to do with the topic at hand. You're just throwing those in there because you know nobody's going to challenge you. Well, consider yourself challenged today because you should be using flaps in a turn. And now I'm going to explain why. To start things out, let's talk about why the flaps in a turn thing even became a topic for debate. Let's say you're turning base to final and you lower the flaps while making the turn. What happens if the flaps on the left side of the aircraft get stuck, but the flaps on the right side continue to drop? This is what we call a split flap condition, and according to many, the aircraft will continue to roll to the left, and you won't be able to control the aircraft anymore, and ultimately you'll spin to your death. When you look at it like that, you can start to see the concern here. But there are a couple things that this theory doesn't take into account. And it actually took a while for me to find some real information that wasn't pure speculation. But then I found a really great article that was written by Rod Machado for AOPA. In his article, he made some really great points. And he even dug out an FAA regulation that not too many people have seen before. In this video, I'm going to look at some of those things that he said in this article and I'm also going to expand on that information a lot because I think there's some additional factors at play here. According to Rod and my own little bit of research, split flap conditions are extremely rare. I searched the NTSB's website to see how often something like this really does happen. Now just like every government site out there, the NTSB's website is not user friendly at all. So it's difficult to search for specific keywords in all the accident reports. But I looked at all the reports I could find from 2012 to 2021. And even though I can't figure out how to get the last couple years of data, I think this will give us a good idea of how often this really happens. I've already selected loss of control in flight and it looks like there were over 2,000 accidents during this 10 year span. Now if you click on view details, what you can find is a list of accidents that were caused by loss of control in flight. And what you'll find is that a huge majority of these were pilot error. But during this 10 year span, I could not find a single accident that was caused by split flaps. Now if you read the article from Rod Machado, he was actually able to find one accident that resulted from a split flap condition. But apparently it was a home built aircraft that was modified incorrectly, which caused the flaps to get stuck. This is the exact reason why we have certified aircraft. Nothing against experimental aircraft at all. Someday I'm going to build my own. But when it comes to certified aircraft, it has to meet certain criteria before the FAA will certify it and give it an airworthiness certificate. Now you've probably never heard of this regulation before, but when an aircraft manufacturer wants to get the aircraft certified, they use Part 23 of the Federal Aviation Regulations. And what you'll find in here is all the airworthiness standards that the manufacturers have to meet in order for the FAA to issue the aircraft an airworthiness certificate. This is why your airworthiness certificate is so important. It tells the whole world that your aircraft was built according to these specific standards. Now here's something a lot of people don't know. A huge majority of the federal aviation regulations aren't actually in your far aim. 
In fact, if you look here at my copy of FAR 23 and 4 flight, this copy starts at 23 1457. We're missing a ton of stuff in these regulations because most people aren't usually digging for this information. So it's understandable why this whole rumor got started. So let's look at this secret regulation that no one knows about, FAR 23701. And what you'll find in here is that in order for an aircraft to get certified, the main wing flaps and related movable surfaces as a system must be designed so that the occurrence of any failure of the flap system that would result in an unsafe flight characteristic of the airplane is extremely improbable. Or the airplane must be have shown to have safe flight characteristics with any combination of extreme positions of individual movable surfaces. This means that the aircraft manufacturer must design the aircraft so that a split flap malfunction is either virtually impossible or if it does happen you can still control the aircraft. The FAA will not certify any aircraft that does not meet these standards. I believe that's a huge reason why there are so many aircraft like this Piper Cherokee that have manual flaps. It's way less likely for us to get into a split flap condition with manual flaps. If I feel resistance, I'm not going to force the flaps down. I'll just land with the flaps up and I'll take it to the mechanic once I'm safely on the ground. Now to meet this specific airworthiness standard, some aircraft manufacturers go one step further. In fact, some aircraft like this C-130 actually have something called flap brakes. There are special sensors located on each one of the flaps, and if the aircraft senses that the flaps aren't lowering at the same rate, those brakes will lock the flaps right where they are. This keeps the aircraft from becoming uncontrollable. And while I'm sure that it's no fun to land with flaps that are slightly out of sync, I'd way rather that than getting flipped over. Now, according to an article from Aviation Safety Magazine in 1986, Cessna aircraft have undergone extensive flap testing in order to get certified. Not only are their flaps specifically designed to be extremely unlikely to enter a split flap condition, but even if they do, Cessna claims that you'll still be able to control the aircraft just fine as long as you stay below the maximum flap speed and above stall speed. Now you're probably wondering why this would be the case, and I know this is a Piper Cherokee, but on most aircraft the flaps are closer to the fuselage, and that means that they're closer to the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. And that means the control services that are farther away from the longitudinal axis have more control authority, even though they might actually be a little bit smaller. Think about a lever and how that works. You may remember that old quote from Archimedes where he said, Give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it and I shall move the world. Our ailerons are that longer lever. They're intentionally placed as far away from the longitudinal axis as possible. And if you get into a split flap condition, it will try to roll the aircraft but the force it creates is closer to the axis, so it won't create as much force. Now that I've defended using flaps in a turn, let's talk about why it's actually dangerous if you avoid using flaps because you're too scared to use them during a turn. The important thing to remember about flaps is that they're a tool that can help us accomplish a lot of tasks. They can help us by increasing our descent rate, and they can allow us to fly at lower air speeds, which can allow us to land in shorter distances. But most importantly, flaps add a measure of safety when we fly at low air speeds. This is because the stall speed of our airplane decreases when we lower the flaps. Now it's important to remember that our airplane stalls when we exceed the wing's critical angle of attack. But the speed at which it does that depends on a few things. And flaps will decrease that speed. For example, depending on the weight of our aircraft and the weather conditions, this Piper Cherokee will stall somewhere around 50 knots with the flaps up but it'll stall around 41 knots with the flaps down. So if we're gonna be flying at low air speeds, it's much safer to have the flaps down because that gives us more of a safety buffer. Now, you may remember seeing a chart like this while studying for your written exam. As you can see from this chart, when we increase the load factor on our airplane, our stall speed also increases. But in addition to that, notice that our load factor is directly related to our angle of bank. Until now, you may not have understood why that's important. But let's discuss that for just a minute. According to the POH, this Cherokee stalls with flaps up at about 50 knots. Let's look at a dangerous situation that could happen if you avoid using your flaps because you're concerned about a split flap condition. Let's say I'm coming in for a landing and I'm turning base to final. I wasn't paying attention to the winds and I overshot final a little bit. I haven't lowered the flaps yet because I'm concerned about split flaps and quite frankly, I don't need them anyways. Or do I? Now I know that most everyone here doesn't go above 30 degrees of bank in the pattern, 
but because I overshot, I decided that it wouldn't hurt to hit 45 degrees just for a second to get back on center line. I'm a little low on glide slope, so I shallow out my descent as I tighten my turn up. According to my chart right here, if I increase my bank angle to 45 degrees, that increases my load factor to 1.414 Gs. I know it's difficult to tell that by this chart, but there are more precise charts out there that'll tell you that a 45 degree bank turn gives you a load factor of 1.414 Gs. Now, we can look across the chart to see that our stall speed also increases. And it actually increases by the square root of your load factor. So the square root of 1.414 Gs is 1.19. So that's almost a 20% increase in our stall speed. That means that with our flaps up, our stall speed is no longer 50 knots. It's actually over 59 knots. And guess what? Our landing speed is exactly 59 knots in this airplane. So if you decided to slow to your landing speed early, you just stalled and spun to your death. Dang, I wish there was a tool that could help me tighten my turn radius without increasing my load factor. It sure sucks being dead. Did you know you can shrink down your turn radius by lowering your flaps? Every CFI teaches their students that flaps can help increase your descent rate, but they often forget to mention that they can also tighten up your turn radius. The reason for this is that the turn radius of an aircraft is directly related to the horizontal component of lift, which, as you may remember, is how we get an aircraft to turn. Well, what do flaps do? Yes, they increase our drag, but they also increase the amount of lift that our wings produce. So, instead of increasing our bank angle, which increases our load factor, we can just lower more flaps. This allows us to tighten those turns up, which can be extremely helpful if you accidentally overshoot final, or if you need to tighten that turn radius for some other reason. Okay, I want to show you guys this because if you see what I'm talking about, this is going to make a lot more sense. First, I'm going to make one complete 360 degree turn at a 30 degree bank angle with the flaps up at 70 knots and we'll see here on four flight what our turn radius looks like. All right, we already did our clearing turns there. For a 70 knots, southbound, clear left. All right, come to south. 30 degrees of bank. 30 degrees of bank, 70 knots. Clearing all around us here, 70 knots. We're staying coordinated. left, 30 degrees of bank, 70 knots, alright, coming up on our southbound heading, we'll roll out, that that's a really good circle, okay, that's so pretty tight, now let's try lowering the flaps and fly the same speed and angle of bank with the flaps down, so we're in the wide arc. I'm gonna go ahead and lower all the flaps here. Let's just do, um, let's do the second notch there. That's what I was thinking, yep. And we'll fly the same airspeed, we'll fly 70 knots. All right, so we're at 2,000 feet once again on a southbound heading, 70 knots. I might put in a little bit more power here. All right, clear left. We'll make our 30 degree bank turn. We'll see how tight this turn is here. So keep my 70 knots. 30 degree bank, staying coordinated. I think you're gonna have a tighter circle here. Yeah, that's what it's looking like. And it's hard to tell on core flight, it really is. It's not exact, but there's enough of a difference. You can tell it's a tighter circle. Yeah. That's a tighter circle. Awesome, so yeah, we'll roll out sure. on our southbound heading. And so, yeah, you can see that with the flaps... All right, that's me, a tighter circle without a doubt. Yeah, so we do definitely have a tighter circle. So those flaps, they tighten their turn radius. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. They, they're a tool. Flaps are a tool. And so they, are, they can really help you out in a pinch. Notice how much smaller my turn radius is. That's because these flaps are increasing my horizontal component of lift. And that's allowing me to really tighten those turns up. And that can really shrink down that turn radius. Here's another huge advantage that you may not have even considered. Before I explain this, I want to caveat this by saying, I don't recommend that student pilots use more than 30 degrees angle of bank in the pattern. But what if you did use 45 degrees angle of bank with the flaps down? 
Let's say I lowered all the flaps and I still needed to use 45 degrees angle of bank in the pattern. What would my stall speed be in this case? Would I still die in the same base to final scenario? Oh, you're dead because E equals MC squared. Yeah, that's an equation you probably don't know about, but it's an undeniable truth that you can't deny. I don't know about that. Let's look back at our chart. Okay, if we increase our bank angle to 45 degrees in a level turn, we still get a load factor of 1.414 Gs. There's no difference there. So our stall speed increases by the same percentage as it did before, but this time our stall speed with full flaps is 40 knots. That means that even with 45 degrees of bank, our stall speed is only increased to just over 47 knots. Remember, my landing speed in this aircraft is 59 knots, so even if I get 10 knots slow, I'm still not going to stall. So you can put that equation back wherever it came from. Yeah. Now this is the exact reason why a majority of instructors teach that you should not use 45 degrees angle of bank in the pattern. Yes, they give you this little scrap to keep you from killing yourself, but they forget to teach you about the most important tool that you have at your disposal, your flaps. Yes, flaps allow you to land at the slowest possible airspeed, but most importantly, they give you a safety buffer when you're flying at those slow air speeds. And while you are required to practice landings in every flap position, I highly encourage my students to use the flaps as much as possible when landing because it's way safer to do so. And even if you did accidentally bank the aircraft to 45 degrees, you know for sure that you aren't going to die when that happens. And to be honest, I like not dying. And I know that my passengers typically prefer being alive when they get back on the ground as well. Anyway, airplane flaps are such an awesome tool. Don't limit your abilities in the aircraft because you're scared to use them in a turn. Even if you did have a split flap condition, there's a 50-50 chance that a failure would just roll you back to level flight. But even in that extremely rare situation, most aircraft you fly are still going to be controllable. And by lowering your flaps in a turn, that's going to allow you to increase your descent rate, tighten that turn radius up when you need to, and give you a safety buffer. Now, one thing I didn't mention today is that in addition to all this, flaps can also help you slow down faster because they create a lot of drag. This is actually one of the biggest reasons why the military teaches their pilots to use flaps in a turn. There are a lot of different situations where those guys need to go from high air speeds to low air speeds. And while you probably won't find yourself in a situation like that in your Piper Cherokee, you may very well find yourself in a situation where you need to lower those flaps in a turn to slow yourself down and get yourself stable without stalling. Because as I've mentioned before, landing on speed is the single most important part of making a smooth landing. I hope I didn't make anyone too mad with this video today. I appreciate every one of your comments and sometimes negative comments are the best ones because they force us to study and understand more about what we don't know. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and this is another one you might like as well. And E equals MC squared to you too. Bro, you're not going to believe this. I just bought a free pilot training. I'm going to keep on watching.